Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Psalm 46 begins, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Heidi, Rick, Terry come singing, Where could I go but to the Lord? Sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search God's holy word in order to find the answers. Question number one, John 3, 16. Is that all you need to get to heaven? And the answer is, yes, absolutely, gloriously, thank God, yes, that is all that is needed. If a person were to lay hold of one verse of Scripture, that would be the one that they most certainly would want to lay hold of, that God so loved the world. He had a love for this world so vast, so great, so deep, so high, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, there is the vital word, that whoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. But let me underscore that belief, though it is in one sense a very simple thing, to believe in the name of Jesus, to believe that he is the Son of God, that he came into this world to die for your sins and mine, it changes everything everything. Let me give you an example. Just recently, my wife and I celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. Little did I know that half an hour 40 years ago would change my life so incredibly. And then 
when our daughters were born. Once again, my life changed incredibly. Well, it may seem like a small thing. It may seem to someone, well, oh, okay, I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he's a good man. I believe that he lived 2,000 years ago. I believe that he was born in Bethlehem. But to believe that he is exactly who he claimed to be, the very Son of God, able to forgive sins, and to believe that he is King of kings and Lord of lords, it changes everything for us that we trust in him and that we attend to his word most carefully. I want to take you to John chapter 3 and verse 36. It says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. John chapter 6 and verse 47. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. And the early Apostles, they, the preachers of the first century, they had this riveted within their preaching. Peter, for instance, as he began ministering in Jerusalem, he was undeniably, unapologetically calling people that Jesus was exactly who he declared himself to be and that he had come at the direction of his father to forgive sins and to make forgiveness possible by his death on the cross. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 31, Paul and Silas in Philippi, when the uh, Philippian jailer asks them, what must I do to be saved? They did not talk about a donation of money. They did not talk about a particular act of service or a whole series of acts of service. They said to the Philippian jailer, believe, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household, period, period. So yes, is John 3.16 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life? Is that what you need to get to heaven? Yes, dear friend, it is. Question number two. What do you think of soul sleep? Now, for those of you who are unacquainted with the, the, this term, soul sleep, it is the doctrine, the teaching, which goes around from time to time, and right now it seems to be at a rampant stage of error where people believe that when a Christian dies, they go to sleep, and that that's it until the resurrection. But that is simply not what the Bible teaches, and it is most certainly not what the earliest apostles and uh, orthodox preachers of the past 2,000 years have held to, and orthodox believers in the Bible. I want to take you to three or so passages of Scripture just ever so briefly in Philippians chapter 1 and verses 21 to 23, the Apostle Paul, he says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's not sleep, it's not oblivion, it's not unconsciousness. There is a gain because he believed that he would be in the very presence of his Master and Savior, whom he had served and loved wholeheartedly. Paul goes on to say, But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which to choose, but I am hard-pressed from both directions. And hear this, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, not to be asleep in some stone-cold tomb, but to be with Christ. And he says, for that is very much better. I want to take you then to Acts chapter 7 and verses 55 and 59. And here we have the first Christian martyr, Stephen. He has just preached a mighty sermon 
And those who hear him are gnashing their teeth in rage at him because he has spoken truth so boldly, so plainly, so convincingly, they don't know what to do except to hurl huge stones at him. Stephen, he says, or, or it is recorded of him, being full of the Holy Spirit, he, Stephen, gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He wasn't about to go to sleep. He was about to be ushered into the presence of Jesus. And after they started stoning Stephen, causing his death in verse 59, they went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And that is exactly how he died. It says then at the end, having said this, he fell asleep. Now I will comment on that in just a moment. Luke chapter 23 and verse 43 is also the account well known of Jesus interacting with the thief right beside him dying upon a cross. And the thief had said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Today I say to you, or, or rather, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It wasn't, I say to you on this day that someday you'll be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. That was the promise, and that has been the glorious hope of believers all through the years that to die is to be with Christ instantly. The body of a believer does go into the ground or it is disposed of in various ways. I had a great, 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 great grandmother who was buried at sea on the journey across the Atlantic from Ireland. And her five-year-old son, one of my ancestors, he watched his mother being buried in that way. In various ways, people have been buried and their bodies disposed of. The body is laid to rest in various ways. The spirit goes to be with the Lord. And when Christ returns, those who have died, it says he will bring them with him. Well, why the resurrection? Why does the body have to rise if we have already gone to be with Christ. The answer is that Christ came to redeem every part of us. And in the reunion of our bodies with our spirits on that glad resurrection day to dwell for all eternity in heaven, it is indicating that Christ's work was full in the fullest manner. It was final. He came that he might redeem us, body, soul, spirit, every part of us, and that the devil might say, look, I won a victory. I, you might have gotten the spirit, but I got the body. Not so. Jesus came that we might dwell with him in every sense for all eternity, and he came that we might dwell with him in every way. So our, our soul, indeed, it sleeps in the grave, but instantly at death, we are consciously, we are actively, we are vibrantly rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And so soul sleep, I'm sorry to say this to many, but rubbish and nonsense, the Bible simply does not stand with you, dear friends. If you have a question for The Bible Has the Answer, please send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi Ruth Matt now sing Like a River Glorious, and that is followed by Lois and Jan joining with Rick singing Heaven is Near.
We are pleased once again to talk about Look For Me Around the Throne. It's a CD of 13 songs, various ensembles as well as the full group. We would love for you to have a copy. Ask for your copy of Look For Me Around the Throne when you write to us this week at Faith To Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call us toll free 1-833-367-3852. Also, our website, faith to live by, 
www.ca.ca.ca has a means of you requesting a copy to be mailed to you or of you downloading those audio files for your blessing. Now we have the male quartet coming to sing Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead In Luke chapter 3 and verse 10, we have the, the John the Baptist being asked by the crowds to whom he was preaching, what are we to do? We have come to be baptized by you, and you have yet spoken a very stern word to us. And he speaks that there are implications. There is a follow through. We are not saved by what we do, but because of the commitment that we have made and the surrender we have made to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, to God the Father and His plans for us. There are very practical implications, and John lays out some of those. Then the people, they're looking at John and thinking about him, wondering in their hearts as to whether he was the Christ. And John speaks to them, as for me, I baptize you with water, but one is coming, who is mightier than I. John was indeed a mighty preacher, but John points ahead and he says, one is coming, mightier than I, and I am not fit. 
I am not worthy to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John was being a true preacher of the word. And hear this. Every preacher ought to point the way to Jesus Christ. John, from before the coming, before the appearing of Jesus Christ as he comes to effect his ministry, he was pointing forward. Now we consistently point back to Jesus Christ as the focal point of history and our great hope. John would pay a heavy price. He would lose his head literally because of his preaching, because of his ministry, because of his fidelity to the word of God, the plan of God, the, de the declarations and pre precepts of God. But hear this. When you hear a preacher who does not point to Jesus, they're pointing to all kinds of other things. Let them go by the wayside but hear the voice that points you constantly to Jesus Christ. And would you not just hear that voice, but would you heed that voice? Would you come to Jesus Christ to experience true life, abundant and everlasting in him? And may you be blessed, may you be enriched, may you know that heaven is your eternal home as you come to Christ, even today. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 